Hi, St. Clairs. This week, Miss Suzanne shares a story called Being a Disciple is Worth It. After that, I'll sing a song with your names about Jesus calling his disciples. Hi, boys and girls. Today's gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, so Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. And if I were to title it, I would call it, Being a Disciple is Worth It. And it goes like this. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So boys and girls, I was just looking over some of my items for one of my favorite things I do. I love to scrapbook. And when you scrapbook, you have certain things you do um, need. And you need stickers. These are just some of the things. And you need special scissors to cut the photos. And you need special tape. And a lot of you know this because Wendy... Miss Wendy sets up um, scrapbook cards for Christmas at the Advent table. And I think you got some this year too in the Advent bag. And then you need special papers. You don't have to have them, but it helps you. And then you kind of produce something that looks like this. This is my grandson's Leo's. Um, I'm starting age five months until I get through the book. You can see um, that I've used different colors and things and and that's his sister Autumn. But anyway, so this is what I love to do with my spare time. And since I don't leave my house too much now, I have some spare time. I've been working on other people's, um, if they need something scrapbook like their wedding or maybe their baby's first year or something like that. So that's what I love to do. What about you? Do you have anything special? that you like to do? Do you play sports or cook or sew or knit? Or do you have a group you're a part of when people can meet like normal? What would you do if someone told you you had to give it up, that very thing that you really enjoy doing, just drop it all of a sudden? You might be a little sad, I'm thinking. But what if they told you that by letting go of that one hobby you love, or thing you love to do, you would be really great at doing something different. Hmm. It might be hard to imagine what could be better than your favorite thing to do, right? I want to share with you the number one thing we should be focused on. Do you have any idea what it might be? It's Jesus. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus was gathering his group of friends, his disciples. Usually a disciple sometimes called a student, would try to seek out a teacher or a leader. But in this case, the teacher was finding his students. Some of the learners Jesus chose were fishermen. And Jesus came and found them working and he told them to follow him. He told him them he would make them fish for people. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? But guess what happened? Guess what the disciples did? They didn't ask Jesus to wait for them to finish their job. They didn't give two weeks notice to their employer, whoever that was. They didn't even question what Jesus might have meant about fishing for people. These guys left their fishing gear and their jobs and went with Jesus. And the Bible says they immediately left their nets and followed him. Now, it's likely they had heard about Jesus and knew he was someone who was incredible, someone they'd want to follow. You know, it's possible they weren't even great fishermen to begin with. But the point is, they left what they were doing 
and what they were good at and what they enjoyed, and they went with Jesus. They didn't know every detail of what life would look like for them. They didn't even know this teacher, Jesus, was going to die in a few years. But they knew that following Jesus was the most important thing they could do. They were willing to take the risk to set about other priorities and to spend time with the Messiah while they could. And they knew it was better and more meaningful than anything else they could do, including fishing. So what about us? Do we have to set aside everything else we might do and not have a career or hobbies or anything we want to do to follow Jesus? No. We need to have jobs when you're grown-ups. And it's good for us to enjoy fun activities as kids and as grown-ups. But sometimes we might need to make sacrifices. If soccer games are always on Sunday mornings when church happens, you might have to skip a session you might have to skip a season of soccer or at least a game or two so you can attend faith formation classes when we're meeting on the lower level. If your job, if you're an adult, wants you to do something that goes against God's rules or hurts your family, you might have to seek a different job. If your hobby is taking up so much time and attention that it takes the place of worship or prayer, it might be time to set that aside too. We need to put Jesus at the top spot in our lives. We need to be willing to let go of some things and so that we can serve him and serve others. And you know what? It's worth it. Life with Jesus is better than anything else we can do or even imagine. Following him isn't always easy, but it brings us joy and peace and eternal life. Jesus promises to be with us and to provide for us. He uses us to share his love and good news. So trust in him, trust in his word, and be ready to obey and serve him and others, whatever it might take, it's worth it. Let's close with prayer. Dear God, thank you for your word, the Bible. Help us to understand and follow it. Help us to follow Jesus even when it's difficult. Thank you for being with us no matter what. Thank you for your love. Thank you for Jesus. In his name, amen. Boys and girls, I hope the rest of January is a good month for you. And I hope yeah, February starts off pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, it's kind of gloomy here today, but I realized that you all had snow. I saw pictures of um, Violet and Abby and Charlotte sledding. And I have seen pictures lately of Ivy in Arizona. And I've seen pictures of Clara and Lulu creating art. And I've seen videos of Rowan and his big brother um, making videos with their dad. And I've seen Delilah with her dad in the music room sometimes. So I've seen all of you by and by. And I've enjoyed it every time I've seen you. You're all getting tall. Um, just a reminder, you can call me or text or, or FaceTime or whatever you'd like anytime. If your parents allow it, I'm for it. So I don't want to disrupt your school day, but I'd love to hear from you. Take care. And until next week, see ya. Say your prayers. Be kind. Bye-bye. That was a great story. And it was good to hear from Miss Suzanne. In honor of Miss Suzanne and where she lives in Nashville, I'm going to sing a country song. Did you know that Nashville is famous for country music? All right, well, this tune is something you probably recognize, and maybe you just haven't heard it in a country music kind of way. See if you can hear your name or some of the other names of your friends from church and some new names of other folks who have been tuning in to our Faith Formation services. All right, enjoy. Jesus called them one by one, Brother Andrew and Simon, Along the Sea of Galilee, John and James of Zebedee. Yes, Jesus called them, Yes, Jesus called them Yes, 
Jesus called them, he called them one by one. Ivy, Chloe, and Danny, Silas, Celia, and Teddy, Anna, Ella, Nora too, Arthur, Clara, and Lulu. Yes, Jesus calls us, yes, Jesus calls us, yes, Jesus calls us. He calls us one by one. Rowan, and Charlotte and Abby, Nathaniel and brother Gregory, Becca and sister Samantha, Thomas and his bro William. Yes, Jesus calls us. Yes, Jesus calls us. He calls his disciples calls us one by one. Sisters Kate, Claire, Emma, Miss Suzanne and Delilah, Lucy, Picasso, Herb Downward, Asumi and her twin brothers. Yes, Jesus calls us. Yes. Jesus calls us, yes, Jesus calls us, He calls us one by one. Oh yes, Jesus called them, He called His disciples. Yes, Jesus calls us, He calls us one by one. Well, that was fun. Miss Suzanne and I hope you have a great week. You're staying safe and getting lots of good rest. Bye.